Islands are unique and fascinating ecosystems. Their isolation from other landmasses means they often harbor species that have evolved separately from the continent and exist nowhere else on Earth. You can see this in places such as the Galapagos, the birthplace of Darwin's theory of evolution and home to many unique species. Or in Madagascar, where almost 90% of species are endemic to that island. This uniqueness, however, comes with a trade-off, because many of these ecosystems are very fragile to outside disruption. This is evident in islands such as New Zealand, which evolved to be dominated by birds, with some of them becoming famously flightless. So when the Maori arrived in the 1300s, they brought with them the Polynesian rat, which started to harm ground-nesting birds. And later, the Europeans made the problem worse by bringing their own rats, cats, and stoats. The result is that more than 42% of bird species have gone extinct, with many others on the brink. This fragility means that many island species around the world are threatened with extinction, which makes them the ideal focus for our efforts to fight the loss of biodiversity. Which is how we ended up on an expedition to a deserted island in the middle of the Atlantic. Our story takes place in the small archipelago of Madeira. These islands were claimed at the start of the Age of Discovery by the Portuguese, who settled on the two main islands but failed to colonize the others due to inhospitable conditions. The Desertas Islands, which we are focusing on today, got their name from the fact that they have no fresh water source, making them dry and unsuitable for agriculture. However, this doesn't mean they were left untouched. Any trees on the island were cut, and rats, goats, and invasive plants were left there by would-be colonizers. This has had a significant impact on the ecosystem. The endemic wolf spider was brought to the brink of extinction by an invasive plant, and four beautiful snail species have been decimated by rats and goats. The marine ecosystems around the island also suffered. They were overfished and the native Mediterranean monk seal was almost wiped out of the archipelago for its fur and fat. Only 25 individuals survived the slaughter by hiding in the underwater caves of the island. As you can see, this wonderful ecosystem hangs by a thread and is in dire need of help. A protected area has been set up to shield them from further harm, and there are active conservation plans for the monk seal and the wolf spider, among other species. Rangers now live on the island in turns and undertake the monitoring and restoration work. And this is where our story begins, with a curious ranger and a scientist. Isenberto is one of the rangers that protects the island, and he is a naturalist with a keen eye for identifying species. While fulfilling his duties on the island, he found four snail species that were believed to be extinct at that point. So he reached out to his colleague, Dinart, who is a senior biologist at the Institute of Forest and Nature Conservation in Madeira, and a malacologist, trying to save invertebrates from extinction. Dinart decided to act on this lead, and he put a team together to try and rescue these four species of snail from an almost certain extinction. And this is where we come in. Tiago, one of our conservation biologists here at Mossy Earth, was seeking opportunities to use our membership funding to help underfunded island species. And he reached out to Dinart, who then invited us to support the expedition and some of the future fieldwork. Hi everyone, I'm here in uh, Terta Grande. It's absolutely amazing, these sheer cliffs falling into the Atlantic Ocean, um, as you can see. And uh, we arrived this morning. Uh, and it's been eventful already, so we, we met with the team that was here before. We're working on the endangered Mediterranean monk seal, and it was really interesting to, to learn about that species. And then we've been preparing things for tomorrow's uh, day of field work, and we actually managed to uh, go all the way around uh, the island, so, so the other side of the island, to the area where we will be working tomorrow to drop off some of the materials that we will need. So yeah, very exciting. The scenery is absolutely amazing. And yeah, I'll keep you posted. The goal of this expedition is simple. Save these four snails from extinction. To achieve that, we need to find enough specimens of the four snail species so that they can be sent to breeding centers at zoos in Bristol and Chester. At this stage, you might be wondering why we would go through such an effort just to help some snails. Are they a keystone species? Do they support an entire ecosystem? No, not really. They're just snails, but I want you to think of them more as Mona Lisa. They are unique and irreplaceable. If we lose them, we will be losing something beautiful forever, and despite it not bringing us any direct value, we would be sad about that loss. 
If you saw the passion that the team has for those four snail species, you would understand that they are closer to a piece of art than you might think. Also, snails are a special case. Of all animal extinctions recorded since the 1500s, approximately 40% are non-marine mollusks, meaning mostly snails. When an ecosystem is hit, they are often the first ones to go extinct, and we want to do something about it, which is why we want to save these four snail species. The thing is, they live in hard-to-reach cliffs on this already rather remote island, and they're also really hard to find, making this task much harder than it seems. On the first day of fieldwork, the team headed to the other side of the island, to the known location of the last individuals of Geometra grabemai, with the aim of collecting enough individuals to start the breeding program. I'm here in Fajan Grand, which is where we came to look for Geometra grabani. It's this tiny snail species that can be found nowhere else on Earth, except for this tiny patch here uh, in Zerta Grand. We have at least three to four hours searching in this area. This is a big area, although, although small in this tiny island, but it's a big area as far as land snails is concerned. So we hopefully will find our 15 to 20 specimens that will enable us to start our breeding, captive breeding program. Here you can see the, the habitat. So it's uh, associated with this, uh, this fern, which is found in this area. And usually we find it here in the leaf litter. And it's just this tiny little snail there. So we've been able to find enough individuals to um, decide that we can take some of them with us for the captive breeding program. I'm also right now uh, collecting photos with the drone to create an ordo photo mosaic. Uh, I'm doing this uh, using a software that essentially plans a mission and that then tells the drone where to go, where to take the photos, so that we can then put them all together on a map later. Very, very, very happy because the numbers are four times at least uh, higher than we expected initially. So, yeah, hopefully we'll get more. So this is really good news for the species. Everyone's quite happy, very excited. And tomorrow we're heading up this ridge here to search for a species that's found at the top there in that area. Um, well, actually over there. <laughs> So there'll be a bit of hiking tomorrow. It's that, uh, that peak over there. And um, yeah, so hopefully when we get there, we'll find that the numbers for, for this other species are also uh, better than we expect. Uh, but let's see. We will be taking you along this expedition in four episodes, released weekly. So be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time. Cheers.